Hello and welcome to your daily summary of the 86th SNP Annual Conference 2020. It's day two. We're into our second full day of politics. The stuff that we talk about at conference will be the foundations for the SNP manifesto ahead of next year's crucial Scottish parliamentary election. Here's a quick catch up with what happened on day one. Deputy First Minister John Swinney kicked things off by looking back at the pandemic and forward to how the SNP planned to help the country to adapt and recover. We had two resolutions, the first on NHS, social care and lifelong learning, the second all about green recovery. And Keith Brown, MSP, Deputy Leader, was looking ahead to that all-important 2021 Scottish Parliament election. Our first resolution of the day was a big one. We're talking about an independent future for Scotland. So let's get into it. Scottish writer Matthew Fitt wrote a poem for the opening of the Scottish Parliament in 1999 that finishes with these words. For now we hear Parliament, a wee bit taste of government. Make sure we use what we've been lent and guard advances. Us do Scots folk, we have been kent to buckle chances. We're ready for the next advance, the final step to independence. We've got to this point not by standing aside, but by joining in. The example of our First Minister in recent months has added to our reputation of working hard for all our fellow citizens. Why do you think our opponents spend so much time trying to undermine that record? If it was so bad, they wouldn't need to say anything. Why have we been re-elected twice to government? Because we've sought to serve to the best of our ability. We've tried to govern well. And we've shown that once Scotland has gained that wee bit taste of government, we would all become hungry for more as the majority of our fellow citizens now are. It's now time to complete the incomplete powers of our current parliament, working across the Yes Movement with the people to do it. We've worked with both head and heart for Scotland, but we've more to do. It's great we stand nearer our goal than ever before, but we're not there yet. So let's keep the heat and the heart engaged. Let's keep working together. And together we will make Scotland independent at last. Let's get into day two's first speech with SNP Westminster leader Ian Blackford. Conference, it's always an honour to address you as Westminster leader, even though I do so this year in very, very different circumstances. I'm pretty confident when I say that this is the first time a major party political conference has come from the beautiful Isle of Skye. And that's because this has been a year like no other. I attended my first Scottish National Party conference a way back in 1979. Many of the same faces are still here, but sadly, many have passed on. All of those who've gone before us prepared the ground that saw the SNP become our party of government in 2007. We all truly stand on the shoulders of these giants. Conference, instead of prioritising growth and investment, this week, the Chancellor was deliberately laying the ground for more years of harsh Tory, Tory austerity and soaring unemployment. The spending review exposed the twisted priorities of this Tory government. The Tories freezing public sector pay as an insult to those who have been fighting this pandemic on the front line. The cruel cut to foreign aid support for the world's poorest will threaten the supply of COVID vaccines for the most vulnerable, hinder the education of girls in developing countries and push millions into extreme poverty. These heartless choices tell you absolutely everything you need to know. This is a government that continues to waste billions on Trident, but takes weeks to find the money for free school meals. What a contrast to an SNP Scottish government that is giving two million of support to UNICEF to support efforts to get the vaccine to children in Malawi, in Zambia and in Rwanda. And what a contrast to that fantastic commitment from John Swinney yesterday, that an SNP government re-elected in 2021 will give free school breakfast and lunches to every primary school child. 
That's the kind of support we should give to our youngest. And on Trident, let me be very clear, in an independent Scotland, every single weapon of mass destruction will be removed from the Clyde. With the powers of independence, we can make different choices. We can invest and grow our way to recovery. The Tories have all the wrong values, all the wrong priorities, and they're putting Scotland's recovery at risk. Conference, those generations who went before us, those who founded and built this party, could only have dreamed of the position that we are now in. Winnie Ewing in Hamilton in 1967, Margot Macdonald in Govan in 1973, the breakthrough with the election of 11 SNP MPs in 1974. They paved the way for this party and for this movement. Over all these years, the history they made has sustained our hope. We have come a long way together and we are now within touching distance of independence. But just as we have travelled all this way, we can only complete this journey together. My message to all of us is this. Keep heart, keep the heed, and keep the faith. The plan is set, the path is before us, the chance to choose an independent future for Scotland is coming. A new Scotland, fairer, greener and European. It is now ours to win. Conference, thank you. Everyone's really excited about the next election, but there's a particular excitement for some of our newest candidates. We caught up with some of our fresh faces to find out what they think ahead of the journey towards 2021. Obviously, the conference at home is very different. It must be very strange, but it must have its perks. I mean, what have you managed to do that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to if it was being held um, in its usual venue? For the first time, I'm actually able to <laughs> spend some time with this one. Um, I think uh, we should ask the CEO if we can bring dogs at the next conferences. Yeah. But no, he's this is young Harris, and he's definitely up for uh, an election campaign and hopefully win a few votes for his dad. Yeah, fantastic. I, I would be behind that, bringing the dogs. I think that would make it a lot better. I suppose my next question, more of a serious one, uh, if you're elected next year, um, what key three issues would you focus on? Well, um, in Kelvin, my the key priorities, if I was to be selected as the um, elected as the MSP, uh, would be education and also uh, eco travel and community empowerment. So for me, tackling poverty is right up there. Secondly, public health. I work for a public mental health organisation, and I'm, I'm passionate about improving uh, population health outcomes and, and tackling health inequalities. And thirdly, like to hope to, to play my part in rebuilding our relationship with Europe. Give me a rundown. What makes you the best candidate for, for the people of your constituency? Vote for me because I'm, I'll get stuff done. For too long, the Lib Dems have made a lot of noise in Edinburgh Western, but achieved very little. I promise to actually get things done. So I'm passionate about making this part of Scotland the best it possibly can be. I've got the ideas to make that happen, and I'll put it in the graft. The future's in our hands. You guys have put it far better than I could have. Thanks very much, everybody, for your time uh, and for your input. Love the answers. Thanks, everyone, and good luck in May 2021. Our second speech of day two is a fraternal address from Adam Price, leader of Plaid Cymru. Croeso, Adam. That means welcome, by the way. Friends, Karajan, Gavetheon. I can't see you. I can't embrace you, we can't chew the fat or sing karaoke, but as people and parties, we've never felt closer. From the solemnity of the COVID storm has come a determination which has united our nations and a resolve to rebuild. COVID has crossed continents, exposed excess, entrenched inequality and laid bare the fragility of our being. It has struck everywhere, but how governments have struck back will be the defining issue of our time. Your government has done just that, striking back with the consistency and conviction envied by many across the world under the outstanding leadership of your First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. Meanwhile, in Downing Street, the pandemic has exposed the worst excesses of Westminster rule, 
Dubious PPE contracts, a calamitous testing regime, and a Tory chumocracy, which is growing by the day. In Wales, they stole our tests. In Scotland, too, they denied furlough. And now they're aiming fire at devolution itself. The challenge now for our nations is not to be footnotes in someone else's history, but the authors of our own. The devolution dividend will only take us so far. The real answer to all these questions is independence. Today we may be physically apart, but we've traveled far since we last met. Support for Welsh independence is at an all-time high. People are joining Yes Cymru quicker than David Marshall's reflexes and with as much delight as those conga celebrations. First, we, like you, have an election to win. Over the coming months, Plaid Cymru will be making the case that changing Wales for good will only come about through a change of government. Let no one be in any doubt that I will lead a team and a party clear in its aims, united in its goal, committed to holding and winning an independence referendum as soon as we can. It is this common cause which is the bedrock of the bond between our sister parties ever since Winnie Ewing's seminal victory in Hamilton was cheered on in Westminster by that crowd of at least 200 Welsh supporters with our first MP, Gwynwar Evans, at her side. The Scotland you are creating is an inspiration to us all. And that's why when our independence comes, then you are all invited. And I ask you not just to join us then, but to join us now. Many in Plaid Cymru have become members of the SNP in recent years, and I'm one of them, inspired by the energy and hope exuding from the Yes campaign. By joining Plaid Cymru in return, you can help us ensure that not just one, but two sister nations will very soon win their freedom and join the global family of independent countries. Just like Winnie and Gwynvor showed, we have taken it in turn to stand on each other's shoulders, but this is a fight we will win together. And win it, we must. See you soon, Scotland, and stay safe. Conference believes it is vital that equality and human rights are embedded throughout everything that we do, but particularly in our recovery from COVID-19. And that's what our next resolution is all about. Despite the limitations on our powers, we do have a record to be proud of. And I'm immensely proud to have been part of a government that has done so much to make Scotland fairer and more prosperous. In particular, the revolution in early years, from the transformational increase in childcare provision to the Best Start grant, and of course, the baby box, will leave its mark on Scotland for generations to come. And our work to support some of our most vulnerable children, raising the age looked after young people can leave their care setting, is a positively life-changing action, taken on the basis of listening and responding to the young people themselves. I'm also proud that the SNP has done so much to stand up for women, whether it's improving gender balance on public boards, action to tackle the gender pay gap, standing up for the pensions of the WASPy women, or opposing policies like the abhorrent rape clause. Most recently, I've had the ministerial responsibility for taking forward the Scottish Government's world-leading initiatives to tackle period poverty. And MSPs from right across the chamber deserve great credit for working together to deliver on our shared ambitions. Seats across Scotland will be hotly contested at the next Scottish parliamentary election, and especially the capital seat of Edinburgh Central. We managed to catch up with our candidate, Angus Robertson, for a wee chat on Zoom. Obviously, with the election coming up, you're running for Edinburgh Central. How confident are you? that the SNP can win that seat back from the Tories? The F SNP definitely can win uh, Edinburgh Central back from the Tories, but I wouldn't want to take anything for granted. Uh, they have a majority of only 610. Mm. We've also got a new dimension in Edinburgh Central, which is, as, as in the rest of the country, that there are going to be thousands of new voters, both first-time voters, um, overwhelmingly support Scottish independence, of course, but also uh, international voters, so non-EU non-Commonwealth uh, voters from the rest of the world. So I think if we do everything right, work very hard, 
Uh, we should, we must win Edinburgh Central because we want to make the gains and then move on to the independence referendum that we all want to have. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the independence referendum, if we were to become independent, how do you think that would affect Edinburgh specifically? I, I think independence is a boon for Edinburgh. I think it's very positive for the rest of the country as well. But uh, Edinburgh as the capital and Edinburgh Central is the home to many of our national institutions from our parliament uh, to the uh, underdeveloped nascent diplomatic presence uh, as uh, part of the UK we only have consulates in Edinburgh with mm. in independence almost automatically these are upgraded to embassies this uh, uh, has huge potential for, for Edinburgh it means local jobs it means uh, uh, a net gain in terms of investment of millions and millions of pounds it means uh, bright young things who are keen to be interested in uh, the, the wider world don't have to travel and live and work in London, for example. They can uh, pursue their dreams in Edinburgh. But I'd want to stress that I think the independence bonus that's definitely there for Edinburgh, especially there for Edinburgh Central, is true, of course, for the rest of the country too. So I think there are huge advantages. We, and, and once we understand that, we need to communicate that effectively with people in Edinburgh, in Edinburgh Central, in the rest of the country, so they know that independence will bring direct benefits in terms of jobs and investment right across the country. Mm. Since 2014, we've noticed a huge increase in political engagement across all age groups. Um, but there may be some people who are still a wee bit apathetic. They might think, well, you know, what does my voice matter? What would you say to those people to encourage people to vote in this upcoming election and have their voice heard? This is going to be one of the most important uh, elections uh, in our lifetimes. Perhaps people say that about most elections, but I think that the choice is going to be very clear in 2021. We are either going to have a pro-independence, SNP-led Scottish government that will put Scottish democracy and people in Scotland first, um, or we are going to have, and we've already had it, um, announced a preference of a Tory-led coalition with the Labour Party that will deny Scottish democracy. So anybody watching who's not yet uh, being persuaded, please think about it, have an open mind, uh, you'd be very welcome to join us. And if you're just about there, take that step, be a part of it, let's, let's make this exciting change happen. Another important announcement on day two of our SNP Annual Conference 2020 with Aileen Campbell, MSP and Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Local Government setting out some big plans for housing in Scotland. We are the government that abolished right to buy, brought in modern tenancies and mitigated in full the bedroom tax to keep over 70,000 households secure in their tenancies. And we are the government that since 2007 and over our time in government has now delivered nearly 96,000 affordable homes. And that commitment will continue with this government. We have not yet set the budget, but I can commit today that ahead of the spending review, we will provide at least 500 million pounds of funding next year. This means we can provide certainty now that affordable homes will continue to be delivered beyond this current parliamentary term, ensuring that many more families and individuals can get access to somewhere they can feel safe and secure. We have come to the end of the second day of the SNP Annual Conference 2020. But don't worry, day three is shaping up to be another exciting and inspiring day. Join the over 500,000 people who've pledged their support for Scottish independence at www.yes.scot. Only you can make it happen. Scotland's future really is in your hands. Every single vote will count. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>